Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. Learn another language. I know you're sitting there saying, how's that possible? Well, it is possible. I would like to learn another language. Most of my friends would like to learn another language, and you don't have to travel to another location to do this. I mean, you don't have to go to Spain to learn Spanish or to Italy. It would be nice after you go to school and then you can practice. So I was very fortunate to find Jean Evans, who was co-owner of the Merritt International School of Languages right here in Boca Raton, who is working magic with her clients, I would say. So clients, tell me about your clients. Well, my clients, my clients are actually students and they come from all over the world. Um, Some of them are local, but many of them come from different countries. We have people from Brazil, from Argentina, um, from Hungary, uh, from all points, from China, actually from everywhere. And they are also all ages. So we don't um, discriminate. We take children and we take elderly people and we take others. And why does someone want to learn generally? I mean, I would say if they're going to work in a certain situation, they want to learn the language. But why generally would an elder person want to learn another language? Well, there are several reasons. One, they travel. Elderly people, when you say elderly, uh, I'm not sure what you mean because... I say elders. I never (laughs) call them elderly, actually. Well... Because elderly you know, <laughs> uh, always connotes for me someone who's not well, and they're not. If they're not well, they're not coming to you. But but an okay. older person, let's say an older adult, let's use that word. There are a lot of reasons. One, they do like to travel, and when they travel, they want to be able to speak the language. For another thing, it keeps their mind going. It stimulates them not only intellectually, but um, it keeps their their mental state healthy. So they come and they they realize that if they're constantly learning, then they're going to continue for longer periods with a sane mind. And we always hear people say you have to do crossword puzzles so you keep your mind going. Well, this is kind of a crossword puzzle in In a a different way, way, isn't it? In a way it is, and I think it's it's a little more constructive. It's a little more useful because they can go anywhere and speak to people. You know, Spanish is a very popular language, especially down here. In South Florida, which is the crossroads to Latin America, so many people want to learn Spanish, and we have great Spanish classes. My co-director, Dr. Marta Garrido, teaches Spanish in our school, and she has young students and older students and teaches at all different levels. And so if someone goes, are they in a class or are they by themselves? How is it? It depends on what time they come in. Sometimes we have classes and sometimes we have individuals. It really depends on their schedule. And the same for our English classes. We teach English as a second language. And they all come in at different times because some are working. Some have home lives and they just can't get away. So, for example, I teach in the evenings. I teach English in the evenings. And I teach on Saturdays. And Marta also teaches on Saturdays and during the week. And we really try to be flexible to help them with their own schedules. I'll bet it's very satisfying for you to see someone who now is talking in a different language than when they first came in. And, and they're proud of themselves. And you must be, you know, have a lot of satisfaction. It's more than satisfying for me. It's for me personally, I I find it just so gratifying and enjoyable to see them learn from the beginning until they're speaking fluently or almost fluently and for them it's it's wonderful i mean they get very excited about it so it's great we have a good time too you knowing you is for the short time i do i can see that you have a sparkle in your eye and i think you would have a lot of fun so if so there are schools or there i've heard about places that you come in, and in six weeks, you learn a language, you know, Berlitz, whatever this used to be. But I feel with yours, you're going to go into conjugation with the verbs. You're really going to make them speak it correctly. This is this is right. I mean, we do focus on grammar and writing, on vocabulary, on all aspects of English. And to say they'll speak in six weeks is really 
not true, to be honest. But you know that's what people profess, I know, right? I know, I know they do say they will do that. And maybe they will understand some words to be able to get around. Try to go to the bathroom. But <laughs> <laughs> that and other things. But they won't be fluent. It takes a while. And the difference between us and other schools, I would say, with all respect to the other schools, which I'm sure are fine, is that we really focus on the needs of the students. So, so for example? You, for example, if you're going to another school, you're going to be in a class with quite a few other people. And there's no way that people, that teachers can focus individually on the needs of each student. And we have only small classes in our school, two or three people at the most, or individuals. So we really want to help them with their own needs. And with, in terms of what their needs are, for example, um, if they need business English, we will focus on their specific type of business to help them with their English. As compared to just general, that if That's they just right. want, you know, they, they have friends who speak Spanish and they want to be able to now communicate. If they have friends who speak Spanish, that's that's not usually the kind of person we get in the school because they have friends they want to come and visit. No, it's not it's not like that at all. They have usually very specific reasons. We have TOEFL classes for students who want to go on to higher education as well. What kind of classes? TOEFL. That I thought you said TOEFL. And I, how do you spell TOEFL. that? TOEFL. People here in in this country have to take an exam in order to go into higher education if they are international students. And we teach preparation, TOEFL preparation, to enable them to take these exams. Oh, so it's it's quite a complex. Yes. And this isn't just casual. All right, well, let's talk about then the the whole procedure. When someone comes in, how do you know how much they can really absorb? Um, absorb in, in, in what sense? Learning. How, how fast you can go or what, you know, what you have to do with them. Well, again, it, it's not so much how much they can absorb. It's what they're capable of doing. Some people are not able to come in every day. Some can only come in two or three days a week. It depends on their schedule and it depends on the cost as well. And the cost dep- cost is based upon the number of hours they spend with us and the number of days. So we assess them as soon as they come in to determine their level. If they're beginners, we know what they need in order to succeed. If they're intermediate, we also know. And we can give them an idea of how many hours they will require in order to learn. You're very well-traveled, and I think I can ask you this question. I've always been amazed when people are singers. Mm-hmm. And they've never really taken the language, but they can sing in another language. How do they do that? <laughs> you know, I do that, too. <laughs> oh, 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 see? I... <laughs> but I only do it in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a shower singer. <laughs> okay, so tell me about it. I, I have no idea, but it's fun. That's all I can tell you. That they can start singing in another <laughs> yeah, it's language. True. It's true. Maybe it's a memory. They hear it somehow, and then they just repeat it. Yeah, I, I think that's the trick. <laughs> because I've always thought, well... There's some people who become fun, famous and they can sing in all these different languages. And I thought, how do they do that? <laughs> no, I, I think that is the trick, actually. It's not that difficult. You just listen to the words and right. you memorize them. Well, we think, I think about the uh, opera singers. You know, they have I to know, really sing amazing. in other languages. I know, it's so impressive. Yeah. And so, okay. You're not getting any <laughs> opera singers here, probably. <laughs> no, not at the moment. <laughs> but but um, you did say that, let's just um, focus in on people who... Let's say listening to this show. Mm-hmm. This would be a person maybe in their 50s, their 60s, mm-hmm. and they don't really know where to go to to learn a new language. There's other opportunities, and they feel comfortable with someone. They mm-hmm. don't want to do this on a CD or mm-hmm. you know on the computer. Mm-hmm. They want to do it so they can look at you and you can help them differently, right? Right. That's the whole idea, because working from a CD or on a computer is not interactive. So what we offer is interactive learning. You really can't learn a language unless you're interactive. And for us, I think I've mentioned this to you before, it's a labor of love. We love what we do. We love our students. It's more like a little community than anything else. 
and we put those feelings into our teaching. So now, if you have a couple of people who are just learning, and then they have to talk to each other, right? You know, I've heard places would say, mm-hmm. we're not going to speak to you in your language, only in this other language, and that's all you can do is speak in that language. No, we I can't. would think that's terrible. No, we do don't. Hard. We don't. We, we speak in English, and when they come in, we tell them English. That's why we're there, for English anyway. Right. But we do teach other languages. We teach Italian and Mandarin and French. At the moment, we have a Korean class as well, which is quite interesting. So so how do you learn those unusual languages? Well, we have uh, native uh, speakers who come in as our teachers. We hire them to teach for us. Okay, because I was curious. I mean, you could have... You know, how would you, I mean, I can understand French and Spanish, but how would you learn Korean and Chinese? My is a bit rusty, actually. <laughs> oh, I was going to say that that's probably the, what should be the most popular, because I believe that Chinese is going to be very strong. Well, you know, one of the most popular languages is Italian and French. We have a French class going on as well at the moment. So right now we have uh, French, um, Korean. Spanish, of course, and Italian. Well, that's um, <laughs> I have I have a lot of experience with Italian because I have a a daughter-in-law who is from Italy and her and she speaks fluent both languages, but her mother only speaks Italian. Hmm, she really? won't. She won't try. No, I think she understands, but she won't. Yeah. Why are people afraid? She's been living here for. Five years, but she doesn't talk to anybody. But I'm sure that she understands a lot of it. But it's very hard for people to get those words out of their mouth. It It really is difficult for people. And that's what we try to do. We try to help them do that. So you give them confidence. Of course. That's what I think is all about. Of course we do. We encourage them. And there's another difference between us and, and schools, two more actually. One is that there are no contracts involved with us. Every other school has a contract with their students. They have to um, uh, commit to a year, usually. With us, it's month to month, and we're happy with that. So when students come and they have to pay us, they pay one month in advance. But that shows commitment on our part and on their part. And the other thing is we also help children, which is something no other school does. We help them with their homework. We help them if they have some type of learning disability. And Marta, my business partner, has an in-depth experience in this area, so she works with them. And there is no other school, language school, as far as I know, in the United States that offers this. That is extraordinary. I think that's, I haven't heard of that. And that's so necessary now because a lot of children are falling behind. Mm -hmm. And the schools just don't have the manpower. They're not getting it. And this child, that's a great thing that you just said. So let me just introduce you again. And um, this is Jean Evans. Mm -hmm. And Jean is a co-owner of the Merritt International School of Languages. It's right here in Boca Raton. You can get on their website. And it's called uh, Merritt. Sorry. So it's called Merritt. No. I-S-L. Right. Dot com. So it's Merit ISL, an international school of languages. Oh, right. I see. Okay. (laughs) I should have figured that out. MeritISL.com. That's it. Okay. MeritISL.com. And they can get on there and see a lot of, uh, get a lot of information, all Mm -hmm. the different languages. And I'll give you the phone number. And the phone number is two, is 561-244-2588. Again, that's 561-244-2588. 2588, and um, the website is com. So let, let's continue this conversation. And are the prices very expensive? Is it expensive to learn another language? Um, I would say for what you get out of it, no, it's not expensive at all. Um, and we try to work with people. All right, so let's them. say that they've been in your class. You do, have, do they have homework? Absolutely. If they follow our guidelines, we guarantee they will learn. Now, when well, that's a big statement. Uh, we guarantee true. they will learn, but they must follow our guidelines. 
Okay, and what are those guidelines? It depends on each student and their level. Uh, with some students, we recommend certain books that are beginner's books, and we work with them with the books. And in others, it's a higher level, so we recommend other things. It, it really, individually, the students are very different. Okay, so let's just take my situation. Let's mm-hmm. say I want to learn Italian. Mm-hmm. How, how would it all begin? <laughs> okay, you would come to the class. We have a wonderful Italian teacher who not only teaches the language, but thrives on the culture. And she will... <laughs> Make she, you pasta when you... <laughs> almost, virtually, actually. She will engross you in the culture as well as the language. So you feel very much a part of it. And if she feels that a book is necessary, a textbook, she will tell you, but you, she will definitely give you homework. There's no doubt about that. Uh-huh. So that, so you have to make sure you have time before you start. Yes. Otherwise, it that is you know true. because it's not going to happen casually, and it's uh, it's obvious. So do you talk to a mirror? <laughs> Actually, I I do um, tell people to use a mirror when I teach accent reduction and pronunciation. Accent reduction. What mm-hmm. is that? Well, sometimes people come into our school and they have very, very strong Spanish or Portuguese accents and they want to reduce it. They want to make it softer so they're more easily understood. And um, that's what I work with. I teach them pronunciation and accent reduction. So I soften their accents. I really can appreciate what you said. I have a, a fabulous friend whose wife is incredible and she's French. She speaks English, but I only understand 75% of what she says. And that's what you're saying because she needs a she le- needs accent, she need reduction. accent reduction. Exactly. Absolutely. That's right. Is it, it, and how do you? There's a very specific way to teach that, this, uh, is program. that what you do? It's part of what I do. Yes, it is. With almost every student, I incorporate accent reduction. It's, it, I will tell you something else that there are, uh, many, very prominent, and I'm just going to say this, Indian doctors. Mm-hmm. And I've had them on my radio show, and I've had them at, at symposiums. I have to be very careful because some of them people just cannot understand. Mm-hmm. Now, how can you take an accent like that that's English, but it's just not clear? Well, we start with the alphabet. And with the alphabet, every sound has two or three different uh, nuances. So we teach them various nuances and the sounds. For example, A has three sounds. The A, the A, which is a short A, like apple, and aw, like awful. And most people don't know that. They just have one sound. If they come from another country, that's how they speak. And it's not their fault because they were never taught. So we try to help them do that. Oh, that's lovely. Well, that's... I can tell you I'm going to send a lot of people to you who are <laughs> and so I can, smart. I can tell you one other thing, though. They don't like the tongue twisters too much <laughs> yeah. because we have fun with the tongue twisters. But they help. <laughs> That's great. It sounds like you just love it. I know you said you did, but you do. I, I do. I see that the smile in your eyes and, I do. and that you just love this. And and there, I don't think I've ever met someone who's, other than in school, that's actually had a school and teaches language. It's not a, It's not common. Probably not. But you know, I've, I've traveled all around the world a number of times. And I think that my communication skills are, are pretty good. I love people. I love talking to people from around the world. And it's who I am. And I think I lend that to what I do. Yeah, absolutely. Works. Yeah, absolutely. I, it's so obvious. And so, um, how long has this, has your school been around? Four years. And you and your partner are uh, really on a great venture. You seem like this is something. What are your goals? If if we could go 10 years from now, what would you like to see? I want to keep going. I want to teach as long as I can. Um, I want to be help, able to help as many people as I can. And I want to see them excelling in what they do and now, meeting their goals. Now, Jean, you said something about... To save some people who may be a little disabled and they have speech. 
Well, I wouldn't say disabled. I will say, okay. I would say challenged. I would say challenged. Challenged. That's a better word. So let's say they, they're, they're American. They speak English, but they have problems maybe from stroke. Mm-hmm. Have you ever tackled that? No. So we're not talking about that. No. We're well, talking about, about children who have a slight disabilities with learning. Maybe they're dyslexic. That's possible. And dyslexic, you could handle that? We could handle that. Oh, that's or, excellent. Yeah. Or maybe they're just a little slow in understanding the work that they're doing. Maybe they need more motivation. We sit down with them to try and find out the reason. We're not doctors. <laughs> We're teachers. So we try and help them. It's a very good point because, unfortunately, the schools don't have the manpower or woman power to take the time that you're saying. So so yeah. you could, yeah. people who are listening, if you have grandchildren, you have children, that if you're, they're having problems, that they're mm-hmm. a perfect child in so many ways, mm-hmm. but that they just can't quite get the language, mm-hmm. they should come and make an appointment and see you. Mm-hmm. And there's one other thing I want to mention about the school that's really important to us, and that's business English. Because we have people coming in individually to for help with their business English. And that involves helping with their presentations, with their projects, with their emails. It's difficult for people from a different country to do this by themselves. But we also have companies that we go to. So we might, for example, go to a company that has six or eight employees and teach them all at once, once or twice a week, sometimes three times a week. And that way, if they're in a group, it's less expensive for them and it works faster. So we do offer that service too. Or they can come to us because we have the space for them. Yeah, and I would think that they might like that. If they're not shy, they may like that to be able to talk to each other. And then That's when they right. leave That's exactly right. and they're together, mm-hmm. they can yeah. have some fun and That's right. talk about it. I was thinking, and I, I know that it's, it's preposterous, but wouldn't it be fun to have a cooking class in another language? <laughs> it would be great. I think Boca has one actually in Meisner somewhere. Uh, in another language? I think they do. Oh, yeah. I think oh, I've seen okay. Because, <laughs> you know, you put the wrong thing in because you tell them what to do. So you're, um, tell us about a little bit about your history, though. I, you have a very interesting life. Well, um, I was born in this country. I grew up in New York State, but I lived in England for 38 years. And in England, I was a publisher, um, a medical publisher. And I kind of carry that into the business now, actually, because we offer editing services and translations as well as a kind of side service. And I try to maintain my hand in publishing. Um, while I was living... Yes, excuse me. I've seen some of your books. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing that you do. Thank you. Um, I loved doing that. But when I came back from England, moved back permanently, I decided it was time to do something else. And having met such great people all over the world, I knew that languages was the way to go for us. I was fortunate to meet Marta, who was a professor at FAU at the time. And uh, we decided to establish the school together. It sounds like a great idea. I mean, that's... Mm -hmm. It's not common, and that's very nice. Um, as you were talking, though, I was thinking about, you talked about language. Mm-hmm. I hear so many uh, improper languages, mm-hmm. I mean, English, mm-hmm. and they don't use the right words. And, true. and even column, even when you listen to television, you listen to the, you know, the talk shows, I mean, the serious talk shows, there's a, there are a lot of words that are not properly spoken. But it's not something you can correct someone with. I not, mean, I, as a person, it's not appropriate. But it's something that someone, and they may not know that they're doing this. That's the problem. Otherwise, they ought to come. They just didn't get it in in school or something. And I had a fantastic husband who was really had a great mind and a language. And every time I'd say, say, no, no, you lie in bed. You don't, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> he he did that to me, and I do have a lot of language now that I have to attribute to his correcting me. Mm-hmm. 
So that's probably, you probably hear these things. I, Affect, I hear effect, them all the time. you hear a lot of it, and I you hear just them all the time. cringe and you And do actually, anything. I even read it in the newspapers. Oh, you know, yes. You know, I, I read everything I can get my hands on, and I see it very often. And on TV, you're absolutely right. On the news. Definitely. It's, yeah, people are always making mistakes. Something and I rather than me. Exactly. And that's one of the bigger ones. Yeah, but, you sure. know, and then and then sure. when you do it that way, they probably think that you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, but they learn, you know, when yeah. they come to us and we teach them, really? Is that the way it's supposed to be? <laughs> so why would someone come to you for that? What would they be looking for? So people who are listening now, if they just want to be able to speak better, how, how well, do you even package people that? People don't normally come to us just because they want to speak better. They normally have a definite goal in mind. You know, people from other countries do want to speak better, of course, but there's usually a goal. They want a better job. They want to be able to uh, integrate with Americans, with the people they're working with, with the people they're associating with, mm-hmm. even socially. So there are a number of reasons. Yeah, this is very interesting. I can see where, where your school has so much possibility and so much opportunity and I'm just going to give the phone number again. If you want more information, be sure to call Jean, and the number is 561-244-2588, or go on the web, which is themeritisl.com. That's it. We did it. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.